Sunny Bunch last updated 1039, October 27, 2017 By now you've heard, perhaps, that Kid Rock the alter ego of Robert Ritchie, known for Ba with the Ba and other mellifluous music is not, in fact, running for Senate in his home state of Michigan. F. No, I'm not running for Senate, Kid Rock said on the Howard Stern Show on Tuesday morning, putting to bed months of rumors that he was making a bid to join the world's most exclusive club. I'm releasing a new album. I'm going on tour, too. And, of course, this is as it should be we're all better off with the soothing sounds of American badass and cowboy and born free and caroming off of our arena walls than Kid Rock's five-point plan for tax reform blasting from the hustings. Kid Rock's stage show gets political in Michigan, but in real life, he's not running. But if we're going to be honest with ourselves and we're all friends here, so that's okay the reason Kid Rock's shenanigans weren't dismissed out of hand as little more than free publicity for a singer looking to make a few extra dollars is that, well, it all made a bit too much sense, didn't it. Read more Are You Kidding Me Kid Rock Says No to U.S. Senate Run Kid Rock to Run for U.S. Senate in 2018 Kid Rock The Rock Caitlyn Jenner hint at joining U.S. politics but what's in it for them campaign calling for President Dwayne The Rock Johnson filed reality TV star Caitlyn Jenner is considering running for official not solely because of the election of Donald Trump to the presidency, mind you, though the similarities between the two are obvious one imagines that Mr. Rock's coopting of a variety of nonsense pandering to working class whites could have led him to victory in the state Trump carried 47.6% to 47.3%. Kid Rock does not have designs on a political career. Thank God. It certainly made sense to some members of Trump's coterie. Kid Rock said Trump ally Stephen K. Bannon had prodded the rock rap country pop star to run, and the Daily Beast reported that Bannon had been in touch with Kid Rock while working in the White House. It WASNT just bright barsh and firebrands boarding the Kid Rock Express former New York Governor George Pataki tweeted in August that Kid Rock is exactly the kind of candidate the GOP needs right now, and the Senate Leadership Fund said it would be very interested in his candidacy. It's not hard to see why they would be interested. In an era where branding is all important where you have to spend tens of millions just to get people to recognize your name on a ballot, Kid Rock comes with a built-in advantage. One wonders whether the death knell of Kid Rock's pseudo campaign actually came when he learned that he might have to go by his legal name instead when facing Michigan voters. Kid Rock had us all fooled, which says a lot about the state of the world. Between high name recognition and the assurance of coverage from the outlets that lavished $5.6 billion, $8.18 billion in free media on Trump in the 2016 campaign, Kid Rock had a fighting chance to take down Democratic incumbent Debbie Stabino regardless of his past statements, previous disinterest in politics and general indecency. You see something similar in Hollywood, where the mania for films based on intellectual property that is, previously existing movies or books or comics or TV shows or board games that supposedly come with higher brand awareness and, thus, lower advertising costs has led to an explosion. I've giant projects with few ideas and fewer ambitions other than getting butts in seats and making a kick buck. All of which is to say that Kid Rock is to Ouija as President Donald Trump is to Transformers Age of Extinction, but hey Ouija still made $50 million on a $5 million budget less than a billion, but enough to make fiscal sense. There's nothing to suggest to me that a Kid Rock election makes any less electoral sense than Trump's. If that doesn't convince you that our political landscape has suffered some sort of devastating and irreparable malfunction, I'm not sure what will. The Washington Post